Okay, hello everyone. Today we continue our series of events dedicated to the Linux basics. Uh, in the first part, you were given the task to complete an interactive course on Killer Coda uh, dedicated to the basics uh, of working with Linux. And today's webinar devoted to the final quiz. Uh, we will go through all online assignments. After them, I will answer uh, 34 questions on the quiz. Uh, okay, now I want to warn you that uh, this course is great, but contains errors, and uh, I have no way to fix them. So this could prevent you from completing it to the end. Uh, please uh, know this. And to save our time, I'm using onliners. Uh, onliners, that means, uh, so you already see it, uh, that's a set of commands written in one single line. Uh, as usual, we are using in the chat English. Uh, we are respectful of each others. And uh, please leave your uh, questions uh, under the description on the video and I will answer them after the webinar. So let me start our killer coda test from the beginning. Let's do let's update the page. And start. Okay, the first task ah so I will use editor. It looks like a uh, Visual Studio code. Okay, uh, let's start. First question is create the directory and let's put the code here i'm using uh, the mkgir command that creates common test or that creates directory test and also we use path here to create another directory as you can see we have here let's do check let's move on to the second question uh, create files Okay, let me copy paste my onliner here. Uh, in this command, I'm using echo command and uh, echo command prints the greeting uh, directly to the file. I'm using uh, redirect here and it goes directly to the file. So let's, let me show you the file. As you can see, string in, inside the file. Let's do check. And let's go to the third question, create many files. So the first command that I will use it, uh, it's a touch command and creates files. And in braces, we have uh, our range. And let me show you the difference between this command and for loop. So uh, as you can see in the description, we have to create my file 01. Uh, so in this case, like we did, we have uh, no such files like uh, my file 01. We starting with number one. So instead of using this, I will use for loop. Okay, for loop will replace some files. Okay, let's give this time to do. Mm-hmm. 
it's still working okay let's wait a little uh, let me explain what i have here so uh, as you can see i'm using the for loop in range uh, from one to ten thousand and then i do the same command touch and create files using the printf command and let me explain what we have here uh, that is our uh, formatting so uh, the percent sign and zero to d tells printf uh, write some important things so uh, first of all percent size uh, sign tells that we won't print a variable or a value uh, zero tells to add with uh, leading zeros if needed and the number two tells that we want uh, two zeros two leading zeros and then letter d tells that we are printing an integer so the command is completed and let me go up too many files okay it doesn't work so let me clean this folder okay I have no connection so let me back So my killer code connection was lost. So let me go through the steps quickly. Okay. So in this case, I will use uh, for loop first. Let's give it some time to create files. Okay, done. And so not this folder. And as you can see, my file name starts with my file and zero one, as we can see in example. So do check, validation is successful. And we are going to the next question, use pipe. So here we have to create one file, copy it with uh, string new content and then uh, we have to add uh, to another file so let's copy my code okay let me explain you that we have here so echo prints the string the command t writes it to the new file then we have a uh, redirect here to dev null. Uh, that means we throw away all output uh, from the T command. And then uh, we have logical, uh, logical end. That means that next command will be, be running on successful previous one. And the cut command prints the source file 
and appends it to the destination. Okay, let me show you this file. As you can see, both links are here. Let's do check. The next one, copy. Okay, uh, we have to do here uh, copy file into higher directory test and copy this file into TMP directory with the name copied file. Okay, uh, in this command, I am using the CP command. It makes the first copy and then uh, logical end says, so as an previous one, only run the next CP if that uh, one was successful. And the second CP does the copy to TMT directory. So let's do check and validation successful. Okay. Let's go to the next step, move files. And here we have to move test one file uh, to the root directory and then move uh, many files into the test move. It. So let me paste the command here. In this command, I am using the mv command. That means move or rename files and directories. Uh, test one file, my file.txt is a source file and root is a destination directory for this file. Uh, I'm using here also logical end that uh, will run the command if uh, the first command is successful and then I'm using the mv command to move directory test many files that is the source directory and test moved is the destination directory so let me check okay the validation is successful the next question is alias so uh we have to create alias and um, let me explain a little bit about alias. So uh, an alias is a way to define a new command in bash uh, that actually run the existing command with parameters. Uh, so it's like giving the nickname to the command. So uh, some case, uh, thing to know about alias so they are defined in dot bash rc file or bash alias files uh, for your user and the format uh, is name command to run so let me show you my command uh, as always i'm using one liner and i use echo command to push uh, the string to the uh, files that I mentioned before, bash aliases, and then I'm using the logical end here uh, to uh, append this output to, to maybe not, not on the band, yeah, to append the, the file to bash alias and then uh, the last command source bash rc uh, loads this uh, alias into the system. Okay, let's do check. Okay, we can also uh, try to use this uh, alias so here we can copy my dear and as you can see we are in my home directory that is root 
So that means that our alias is working. Okay, uh, the next step, users. Uh, in this uh, question, we have to create users, administrator, app user, and another user. Okay, uh, let's do it. Okay, let me explain this long command that I have here. So first of all, I'm running sudo. Uh, that means uh, this command is running with uh, root privilege. Then I am using bash minus C. Uh, that means uh, I'm using the uh, quoted text as bash command. So then I have uh, loop, it iterates uh, over each user that we want to create. So I, I have here administrator, app user, and another user in a loop. Uh, then um, I'm using minus M to create their home directory and minus S and the path bin bash to set uh, their shell to bash. Then uh, I have to, um, okay, then a dollar sign user uh, inserts the current username from the list, uh, done ends the loop. And so we have here uh, the last command, uh, user mode modifies uh, user minus a this option stand for append and it used to add user to the specified groups uh, but this options we is without removing the user from other groups and uh, minus g this options uh, specifies which user uh, should be added and then we have uh, an app username okay let's do check and validation is successful okay let's go to the question number nine now we have to remove another user so this question is simple. We will use uh, the command sudo user del minus rf another user. So uh, let me explain this. So as always, uh, sudo this command is used to run uh, command with root like super user. Uh, then we are using <coughs> user del command. This command is used to delete a user. Uh, minus R, that means uh, remove uh, user with uh, his home directory. And uh, minus F, that means force removal. Okay, let's do check. And validation is successful. Okay, next question number 10. We are operating with user and so we have to add app user to sudoers file by editing special group as secondary to the users so it's a complicated uh, question and let me show you before uh, doing this step what is actually uh, sudoers file i'm using the visudo command to open this file for you. In this file, you have different groups and users. Here is the user with rights and percent sign. That means groups. And we are going to add our uh, app user to the group sudo to allow execute any commands as root. Okay, let me close this file. And 
paste my command here. Okay, and let me explain what we have here. So as usual, uh, sudo it's a command uh, for running uh, our commands with elevated writes. Uh, then the ghost command user mode. Uh, it's a command that used to modify user. And as in previous, we have min minus g. That means we uh, add user to the specified groups and then goes the group name sudo and the last we have uh, the username up user okay then we have a logical end and and then you can see the echo command that I am using uh, administrator all and then this command uh, specifies the string that we uh, write inside the sudo file. Uh, let me explain what we have here after administrator that's a pipe symbol and here we can see the command t that writes uh, it directly to the sudoers file that devoted to my uh, user administrator let's open the this sudo command again so let me check the sudo group here. Okay. And do check. So the validation is successful. Let's go to the next question. Logs. Okay, here we uh, have to copy uh, logs to the directory, to our home directory. Uh, this is simple task, just uh, we'll, we will use uh, the cp command and that I have different path and the last symbol uh, that stands for my home directory. You know, uh, in Linux, you have different ways to go to your home directory, like writing just cd or cd dollar sign home. I'm using now variable. And if you want to check our command that we are in a home directory, we will use pvd and we are in our root home directory. Okay, let's do check. Okay, next step is a cron tab. Uh, let me explain a little about cron tab. So this uh, cron tab is a file uh, works as a schedule for uh, creating uh, and running commands. And to edit the cron tab file, we have to enter the command cron tab minus e so i will using the first point okay it opened for me the cron file and what i have to do then I will copy prepared string oh, 
sorry, not this one. Let's do it from the beginning. Okay, now it's correct. So we have to uh, do different commands here. Now, first of all, we have to, and the schedule is every minute to have a result. And we have to create uh, redirect to the cron log and to the error log. So this command that I write here contains five stars. So this is uh, the cron schedule. Uh, each asterisk uh, represents a specific time unit. Ah, so let me save this file and let this task go while I will explain this. And let's open it again. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, all fields are set to asterisk. That means that our job uh, will run every minute. Then um, I'm using the echo command. These variables. Uh, and who am I? This is the command that, uh, executed by cron tab or by cron job. And it, it uses the echo command, just print message that includes uh, current date and time, and also uh, the username that is executing the command. Then we have redirect to the var log. Uh, the first redirect is number one redirects the standard output of the command to the file micron log. Uh, the number one uh, represents the file descriptor for standard output. And the next command appends it output to the file. The second redirect to the error log uh, stands for uh, error log. And the number two represents the file description for standard error. Okay, let me close this file. I hope our job is running. And let me check files. Once more. Uh, let me open Warlock first. Okay, let's do cut command and let me Okay. You can see the content of file micron log. And as you can see, have the date, the user. So it seems to everything works well. Let's do changes like in the task. Let's uh, create a take. Uh, we will do something like that. The system doesn't need this command. Let's save this file. And we have to wait a little. And the next file that we want to see, then we'll go for errors. So let me copy the path. And I'm using the cut command. 
as you can see, we have an error. System tells us that uh, EO command not found. Mm, let's wait one minute because in this description, we to validate our task, we have more than one list. Uh, as you can see in my current log, we have three lines and one line errors. So let's do again, so still one line. Okay, we have two lines. Edit cron file again. Okay, let's remove this whole one. And we uh, go to the last tag. So we have to execute our job every Saturday, 5 p.m. And 16. Let me show you the difference between this command. So here we have uh, we set uh, our command to 5 p.m. You cannot see five because I am using uh, the 25 clock. So that goes to 17, uh, 16 minutes. And uh, six represents Saturday, the sixth day of the week. Also, uh, what here, the asterisk represents any day of the month and the second one represents any month. So let's save this file. I'm using CTL O to write and to close CTL X. Okay. So let's check our task. And validation is successful. Okay, then the next question is symbolic link. So we have to create a link named linked file and then put this file link to the home test directory. So let me insert the command. And let me explain what I did here. So first of all, uh, ln command is used to create links in all uh, Unix-like operation systems. Uh, then we have the minus s. Uh, this options uh, for the this is the option for ln command, and it indicates that is a symbolic link. Uh, symbolic link. Uh, also known as a soft links and they are as usual they are refer uh, they are references to another file or directory so they are just similar to shortcuts or aliases in other operation systems uh, then goes dollar uh, home test my file txt so this is the source uh, file path um, we are um, replacing our um, dollar home environment with variable. Uh, this just uh, represents our current user directory. Uh, and then goes uh, dollar sign home link file. This is the destination part for the symbolic link. Uh, we also using the home directory variable, mm. so that also represents our user home directory. Okay, let's do check, and validation is successful. Now, next step: hard links. 
Okay, so uh, we have to create hard link uh, in our home directory uh, with name hard link uh, and link in file uh, myfile.txt in home directory test directory. Let's go. As you can see, we are using the same command N, but without options minus S. So, uh, uh, and the same uh, here, first dollar uh, home test my file is a source file path that represents our home directory and the dollar home hard link. So that's uh, the path for the hard link. Let's do check. And validation is successful. Let's go to inodes. Okay, we have to create uh, inodes.txt file in our home directory. And this file should contain only one uh, value in node of etc docker k json. So as I saw in the chat, we have an error here because we have no uh, docker k file json installed on this system. But anyway, uh, we have created uh, this inodes file. And if you can check it, the validation is successful. So, and let me explain. So we are using the ls command here. Uh, this command is used to list files and directories in Linux systems. And minus i, uh, this option stands for uh, a node number of each file or directory. Uh, then goes the path to the file in our case that's etc docker kjson uh, and then the home in nodes.txt goes to the destination file uh, we are using here uh, the redirect as well to edit to adding files in nodes.txt Okay, let's go to the permission. As you can see, we can you can see back here the number is sixteen here fourteen, uh, and we have to create some objects with provided privileges in our home directory. Uh, in this we have to use uh, the touch command uh, with names that provided here so i have touch my script my text and then goes logical end and the ch mode command with number 751 uh, to my script dot sh so let me explain what does it mean so you know uh, we have different types of uh, permission here uh, we can execute files write files and read files you can uh, also have groups users and all users that we have in the system uh, in this case uh, 751 7 indicates ah so let me start with an explanation uh, each uh, permission has their own number uh, execute stands for one uh, read for four and write for two and the seven indicates that we can read write and execute permission 
then goes the number five that indicates that we uh, can read and execute uh, so the second letter is also for the groups and the number one that indicates that we can execute uh, this command for other users uh, so the first seven the seven number uh, stands for permission for their file owner so i forgot to mention it so let's go to the uh, sh mode 664 for my text file and this uh, permission six indicates uh, read and write permission for the file owner uh, and <clears throat> for the group and the number four indicates read permission for other users. Let's go to the SH mod 700 for my dear. Uh, in this case, uh, we that uh, indicates seven indicates that we can read write and execute and execute permissions for directory owner and we have no permission are granted to the groups or others okay so let me check so we have no my dear directory sorry we have to create it mkdir my dear okay so the last step we have here uh it's a final quiz so let me clear the screen using the clear command and what we have to do uh, we have to execute this script file then we say yes we are ready and the first question is here uh, if you want to list files in colored mode so we have to use uh, color yes but uh if you if you will put just color it will also work so this there is a mistake in the system but the uh, correct answer is number one okay the second question here uh what is the difference between ls minus a and ls minus capital a uh so let me explain this because uh, looks like the same but not the same because capital letters uh, in linux means different uh, even variables and options so first of all ls minus a um, that means uh, will show uh, files including the hidden files starting with dot for example uh, bash rc like we did before and it also will show the special folders uh, for example like double dots uh, and ls minus capital a uh, they will show also hidden files but without special folders so and the correct answer here number three let's go to the next question number three what is m time so the m time also always indicates uh, the 
uh, actual content of the file where last change it so um, it gets updated whenever the file data is overwritten or appended to uh, so this the answer here goes to number two last modification of the content the next question is uh, man is so this is the simple one uh, the man command in Linux stands for manual and it uses to display manual pages or help information about commands so let me answer and correct answer here is number four okay let's go to the next question man eight ls will show okay so uh, as you already know uh, the man command followed by section number uh, it has different sections so and the section numbers uh, categorize the manual page into different types for example that could be uh, system calls maybe library function devices etc uh, in this case uh, section 8 uh, is for system administration comments and routines so the correct answer here is number three that will be follow us to the eighth page of manual next question number six uh, function of pvd file so this is a simple one the pvd command in linux stands for uh, print working directory so it prints the full path of the current working directory so for now it's root and the correct answer is number one okay let's proceed the next question number seven so you are uh, in the data directory and you want to navigate to your home directory and as i already mentioned we have different types uh, ways how to go to our home directory and all of them are correct here so the correct answer is four let's go to the next question number eight so we have to remove directory and data and everything that is inside so the best way to do it uh, is using rm command uh, with options minus rf because um, the commands we have here uh, rm data uh, will only try to remove the directory file but not its content and the rmdir data minus f uh, so it can remove not empty directories so the correct answer here is number four okay let's go to the next question number nine um, what is actually touch command so we uh, use touch command maybe five times today and the touch command uh, create empty files or also it put update the timestamp of on existing files but the primary use of touch create a new file so the correct answer is number one okay the question number 10 Uh, what does uh, command do and here I have uh, so this uh, quiz have a mistake maybe it's not a mistake but uh, it's not common 
um, way to explain what this command can do because uh, let's break it to the parts so first of all uh, ls uh, minus a and l etc lists all files in the etc directory in long format then we have a pipe sign and it pipes to the grab command ssh uh, this command filters uh, for uh, only files contained ssh so we will uh, show all files named with ssh and that output also piped to vc minus l command and this command counts the number of lines in the file in our case that will be number of files in the etc directory that contain name ssh I hope it's clear uh, and the correct answer here is number of lines with SSH in the line but uh, when I did this test I sent the number two as options as an answer but that was incorrect one so let me type three here mm -hmm. and let's proceed to the question number 11 uh, we see minus l will do what and as i already mentioned we see command prints number of lines uh, or uh, so first of all we see command stands for word count but uh, with option min minus l uh, it counts lines instead of words uh, okay and then we have here the redirect we are redirecting the content uh, of the file named file uh, as input to vc command so the correct answer here is number three print number of lines in the file okay question number 12 which example represents situation when command 2 operates on output from command 1 okay so you know already the pipe symbol and in this example uh, let me show you so we have command one uh, and the pipe symbol and command two uh, the other examples uh, don't represent this situation because uh, maybe in first options command two operates only on processes uh, from command one uh, Command three, we have no command three because it receives its output from command one before command two. So the correct option is number three, command one, pipe to command two. Okay, let's go to the question number uh, 13. Uh, who shows the who command uh, displays a list of users who are currently logged into the system so uh, in summary it provides a real-time snapshot of active users so the correct answer here is number two let's go to the next question what is actually a pc command without arguments okay in this uh, as you if you write the pc command uh, it is associated with the uh, current terminal only so the correct answer here is um, 
all processes running by current shell. Let's go to the next question, number 15. Uh, the output of ID command shows. So the command, uh, the ID command displays the real and effective user and group ID of the current user. So the correct answer here is number four. Let's go to the next question, number 16. Mm -hmm. So uh, what does it mean in the file shadows? Uh, there is also uh, two correct options here because it means password is not set, but uh, the correct option is number three, password was never set. Uh, because this file, um, this file actually uh, have a lot of uh, information inside, like uh, username and encryption, encrypted passwords, uh, the date of uh, password change, and minimum password age, and so on. So, and the explanation mark means that password was never set. So the next question, 17. Uh, so I want to create new user with bash as shell and create default home directory. So we did this task in uh, the demo and the correct option here is number two. Okay, next question, 18. Um, I want to add secondary group docker to user new user. Uh, the correct answer here is number one. We are using the user mode command. And as an example before, we using the options AG to add the secondary group to the user. And so the correct option here is number one. Okay, let's go. To the next question, 19, what sudo commands allows? Uh, so this is uh, sudo means uh, super user do. It allows to normal user uh, run commands as the super user or another user without login is without login in a root or knowing the root account password. So the correct answer here is number two. So execute command as root. Uh, there is a bug. Next question is the same question. So let's answer number two. The next question, number 21. Mm. And we have a mistake uh, here as well because the correct uh, command uh, will stand like uh, sudo user mode then options minus ig and then we have to write sudo and then my user because uh, here we modify we specify the group sudo and the correct uh, answer is number four Uh, let's go to the next question. So what does it mean in Sudoir's file? Uh, that means that um, my user execute uh, commands uh, on all hosts and uh, that user also um, uh, can execute is as user and uh, any group and the last all uh, specifies uh, the list of the commands so our user can run commands on all hosts as all users and all 
commands, but uh, with without uh, with uh, with asking the password. And the correct option here is number one. So if you will use the sudo command, you will be uh, asking for password. Uh, okay, let's go to the next question, 23. That's a simple one. By default, our logs are saved to the var log directory. Uh, what is std error id? We already mentioned that for errors uh, is number two. Okay, next question, 25. I want to redirect all output and errors to my log. What should I use? Uh, in this option, <clears throat> uh, we have an operator that redirects standard output and standard error to the specified file. In our case, uh, the correct option is number three. So we're running out of time, six minutes left. So let me go faster through our quiz steps. The next question is 26. What I want to uh, add job to the current tab. What should I use? So we already use it. And the correct answer here is number three. The question 27. 27 question. When I log it as my user, I created a cron tab where my cron tab file is located. By default, uh, the file you created for your user located uh, in the option number one. Okay, let's go to the next question. I want to check detailed information about my file. Uh, to check all information about your file, it's the best way use stat function, stat command. And the correct answer is here for. The next question, 29. 29, I want to create soft link. So we already mentioned soft link creation goes with uh, options minus S. So the correct answer here is number two. Okay, the question number 30. Um, I want to know if my file has many card links created. <clears throat> In this case, we can use the same command start my file. It will show all information about this file. Okay, let's go to the next question. One of the statement is false. And the correct options is number one because uh, hard links can be created between different file systems. Okay, the next question. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, in this case, uh, we have <coughs> character D that indicates that it's the directory. The next three characters, RVX, represent the permission for owner, the directory. In this case, owner has can read, execute, and write. Then goes Rx, that represents for group members, and they can read and execute permissions. And the last three characters represents the permission for other users. So uh, that means we have the second correct options. Let's type it. Okay, let's go to the next question, 33. We have to translate 642. So uh, in our case, uh, 6 goes to the uh, read and write. The next option, uh, 4, that means uh, we can read and two represents to write. So the 
correct answer here is number three. And the last question, number uh, 34, what does it work, slash uh, mod plus x? And we already mentioned that uh, it adds execution permission to owner groups and other users. So let's type, mm, let's type number two here. And we have congratulations, let me check. So validation failed. So we did mistake something. Uh, so let me do. Not here. Ah, so 24 and 23, 24 were wrong. Let me return to the questions here. Maybe it was must just my mistake. 23. Mm, 23 was about Warlock. So let me check my file. Okay, anyway, uh, maybe I just typed uh, the different uh, answer in the uh, quiz. I will uh, update the description uh, for this video and I will put all answers to the uh, description. Maybe that could be the link to a repository or something like that. Uh, but anyway, one minute left. Let me go to the OPT folder. And let me just mm -hmm. simple folder. Okay, without of time, I cannot find the file with results. Maybe it's in team team P directory. Okay, anyway, I, I will provide the correct answers for you uh, after this webinar. Thank you for joining me today. Sorry for this inconvenient situation in the beginning with my microphone. I will uh, cut this part from uh, my video. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, I will update the description that I mentioned uh, before. You may answer any question uh, in the comments. I will answer them and I will also put my contacts uh, to Discord or LinkedIn web page uh, to do you have my contacts here. So thank you for watching and joining me. I hope you uh, will do this task correctly after this webinar. Thank you and bye.